Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Sabrina and I would love it so much if you would subscribe. Today's video is going to be more of a personal one and I really want to start diving into videos like this and just getting super open with you guys. If you know me on a personal level, you know that not much goes unsaid when it comes to me. I'm an open book and I'm not sure why that is but I've just never really been shy about a lot of things and um, I recently saw a YouTuber that I watched kind of get into some controversy because because she was kind of open and then she didn't want to be open anymore and I saw that her viewers were really asking for it and I thought why have I never done like a, a sex Q&A why have I never done anything like that before so um, I asked you guys to send me in your juicy questions and assumptions about me and I'm gonna lump them together because I didn't get enough to do a single video so if you guys aren't following me on Instagram make sure you follow me on Instagram I'm also gonna leave my curious cat linked below it is just an anonymous um, site you can ask questions and if I get enough of these I will do more in the future I am super open and I'm super excited to share with you guys uh, my answers to some of your questions there are some juicy ones so if you are in my family or do not want to hear me talk about sex or anything like that you can go ahead and click off I would not be offended and if you keep watching then it's kind of at your own discretion I guess I don't really know but let's go ahead and get into these questions so the first assumption says great at makeup loves tattoos and piercings sweet strong-willed confident lady so I wouldn't say I'm really great at makeup I like doing makeup but I feel like there's a lot of room that I can improve I do love tattoos and piercings and I think they're super tasteful and super beautiful I think they can be tasteful and beautiful when they're done tastefully we I think depends on who you ask strong-willed I would say yes and confident I think some days it depends um, some days I am super confident some days I feel like I look like a bag of turds so I think it's just kind of the day but overall I would say that I am pretty confident the next assumption says that you are strong and love to be independent but Mr. Man's a lot um yeah I, I would say that I love to be independent my independence is something that I take very seriously um, this person is referencing the fact that Jacob and I live two hours away um, I know she's saying this because we had a personal conversation about it because um, she asked what we were doing for Valentine's Day I do miss Jacob a lot, but we will be moving in together very shortly, and I'm sure then he will be sick of me. The next assumption is that I have a favorite soda, and it's Dr. Pepper. This is correct. I love Dr. Pepper, and if I had to pick another drink that's not soda, it would be sweet tea, specifically Chick-fil-A. Someone uh, assumed that I've been engaged before. I think this is interesting. No, I haven't. Um, I've been in, like quote-unquote serious relationships where I thought I was gonna marry the person but thank god I did not but I've actually never been engaged before this is my first engagement hopefully my only someone says you have great taste in music I have no basis for this just a feeling I personally think that my music taste is incredible but obviously I'm biased because it's me I'm sure some people would think that my music taste sucks but I think that I have a pretty good taste in music this one I was actually talking to my friend about it says that you're super sweet and are never mean rude to anyone Thank you so much for saying this. Um, I would like to think that overall I'm a pretty sweet person, but I do kind of have an attitude to me. I can be a total bitch. I get very sassy. I know that I have an attitude. It's something that I really need to work on. Um, I am mean to people, especially when I'm driving. I have road rage so bad. So um, I wouldn't say that that's fully true, but I appreciate you being so sweet. Now we're gonna get into the more juicy questions. So if you stuck around this far and you do not wanna hear me talk about sex, please click off now because I am gonna be getting personal or if you're like my mom or my sister, even though my sister probably knows all this stuff anyway. If you don't wanna know this stuff, then obviously you don't keep watching so the first question is what's your opinion on masturbating I'm a Christian and I feel bad about it so should we so this is kind of a personal thing I don't think that I can give you an answer for this I think that if you feel bad doing it then maybe you should try to like reach in to figure out why you feel bad about it I personally don't do it a lot um, and I think that's a personal thing because I don't love doing it I don't love doing it I don't love touching myself I don't really get pleasure from it um, I feel like I have a lot of like weird um, thoughts around sex that I'm sure that I will dive into a little bit later but um, I think that that's a personal thing I am gonna leave a link below to a video that I recently watched by God is Grey I love her channel so much um, and she talks about masturbating um, when you're a Christian and kind of her viewpoints on it I love her approach and I think that it's super important if you're a Christian who's looking for answers in that she gives some really good information and I'm gonna leave that link below someone wants to know when is J Jacob's bachelor party I want to crash it or your bachelor bachelorette party 
gonna be honest with you guys we have not planned anything um trying to buy a house has taken priority over everything right now so the wedding has definitely taken back burner all i know is that he doesn't want to go to a strip club he wants to play a uh, dnd and i think that for my bachelorette party we're gonna have like a spa day but nothing is set in stone yet it's just been a kind of talk so i've these i've got similar questions like this um but here are two different ones how is sex life different if at all with something like ibs and is it have is it hard to have sex because of your disability so um, I get questions like this quite a lot and actually people are sometimes get kind of insecure about asking this but um, I get asked it seriously all the time having sex with a disability definitely has its challenges there are definitely things we have to go about doing differently I want to talk about the IBS and then I'll get into my disability so the IBS situation does cause me a lot of anxiety but because because I am paralyzed I have zero control over my bladder uh, my bladder my bowel my bladder either. I have no control over any of it. Um, I have gained some control over it back since um, I've been injured for so long, but it's still a huge fear of mine that I'm going to shit myself during sex. Um, and when I'm reaching orgasm, when I'm reaching climax, it does feel similar to when I need to pee or like when I need to go to the bathroom. There's just a lot of pressure down there. And especially depending on like the position or the way that my body is, there is a lot of pressure down there. So it's very possible that if I need to go to the bathroom, it can happen, which I will talk about in a second because someone asked a question about that. Um, so that it does, it does kind of scare me because I, I don't want that to happen because it is super embarrassing. Um, it has happened before. And so it does cause me from truly, I feel like, oh, opening up. As far as my disability, so I don't know if you mean like feeling wise or just like positioning wise, you definitely have to get creative with it. Um, think about having sex when your legs don't work. My legs literally go all over the place. Most of the time Jacob does have to hold them or I have to hold them or um, my legs kind of push him out even though I can't control him. It's just the force of gravity, I guess. So um, there are some times where it can get really uncomfortable. We're trying to figure it out and I'm fortunate and blessed enough that I have a partner who, <laughs> like sex a lot of the time is just us trying to figure things out and me cracking jokes and us laughing, which I think that's how it should be. So um, there are challenges to it. Um, if you guys want like more specific things, let me know um, in my curious cat or in the comments below and I'll try to answer more specific questions about my disability. But as far as my feeling, I can't really feel. Um, I lose feeling about my hips down. So sex, um, I can't really feel. I do know when I'm going to have an orgasm. Like I said, it feels similar to when I need to pee. So when I first started having sex after my accident, I would actually ask people to stop because I thought I was going to have, I was thought I was going to pee or something like that. But as I've gotten more comfortable with my partners, I've realized that that's actually a good thing. And um, it's not it's not what I think it is. I've kind of learned that about myself. But sex is definitely different when you um, can't feel half of your body. You just have to kind of learn to adjust. Someone wants to know what's one thing that automatically turns me on. Um, having my nipples played with. Nipple simulation is something that always gets me going. But um, she, the same person did ask, now that you have your nipples pierced, are you more sexually sensitive by them or not? Yes, I would say. Before, my nipples were pretty sensitive. Now it's to the point where if they get touched for like even slightly too long, it gets really uncomfortable and starts to itch. So I really have to be careful with it because it gets really uncomfortable and then I just get annoyed because it starts to feel like not good anymore. Um, but I definitely... I definitely think that having my nipples pierced helped me feel more confident, which made me feel like better, like wanting to be intimate with my partner. So I, somebody asked this and she said, what's your sex life with a spinal cord injury? I sound so dumb, but can you actually feel anything since you do have the injury, but you can still feel it when you need to go to the bathroom? So I think I did kind of explain that um, a little bit earlier, but I, I think I need to expand on it a little bit. I don't really have a sex drive. I started to lose my sex drive with my last partner and I thought it was because I just wasn't attracted to that that person. I, I At first I didn't know what it was. Um, now looking back I think it was because I just wasn't attracted to them. Um, I got on birth control. I had the next put on implant in my arm and that was supposed to be known to cause you to have like zero sex drive. I had the next button on implant for probably about four years. I had it removed once and then replaced. And in December, I did get it removed. I do feel like my sex drive has came back, but I still don't have like a super um, strong drive to want to have sex or to want to be intimate with my partner. I just feel like I'm less likely to say no if things start to get, like it's not like I randomly get turned on or anything like that. Um, something usually has to stimulate me or turn me on. It's not like I'm just like laying in bed and wake up really horny or anything like that. 
I hate the word horny, ew. But yeah, so um, I can still feel like period cramps. I can still feel like when I need to go pee or when I need to go to the bathroom, but it's different. And so that's why, like I said earlier, when I am having an orgasm, it feels very similar to that. I've just kind of learned my body and learned that it's probably not me peeing my pants, it's probably me enjoying my partners. Okay, my camera cut off, so sorry about that. Um, so the last question I'm gonna be ending off with is what is your most embarrassing or awkward sexual encounter? I actually have three of them that I'm gonna talk about here. Um, the first one happened when I was about 17 or 18. I was dating a guy and he lived in his dad's basement. Um, we were having sex and we went to go switch positions and I went to get on top. When I went to get on top, I have absolutely no idea what I was doing, but I think I was trying to be like sexy and I went to like twist my head and when I did, I ended up bouncing my head off of the concrete wall, like the brick wall of the basement and I, I played it off like I was fine, but we ended up having to stop because I thought that I was going to pass out because I thought I had a concussion. That was definitely embarrassing. Um, the second one <laughs> happened a little bit more recently, like before I met Jacob. Um, I was on Tinder for about a year, that's how I met Jacob, and before I met Jacob, I I only met a couple of people off Tinder. Like, all together, I only met like three or four people off Tinder. One of the guys that I met off Tinder, I really hit it off with. We had a date in a Starbucks, and for some reason, our date got cut short. I can't remember why, but I think it's because he had kids, and I think he had to go pick him up, or his brother, or something. I don't remember, but um, he ended up texting me and saying that he wished our date wouldn't have got cut short, and he gave me his address. Well, we ended up, you know, having a good time, and I really started to like this guy. So I remember texting him and being like, dude, like, I really want to come over and like just fool around because at this point I had been single for like seven months or something like that and I just I just wanted to kind of explore and you know I'm a girl I have needs whatever um so she's like that's okay come over well his house wasn't accessible and he lived with his brother and his brother had somebody over so I was like let's just drive around and try to find some place and we'll hang out there we ended up going to the park and I ended up going down on him and like things were going well whatever and all of a sudden he said he's coming and I thought he meant like a person so I set up really quick to try to like hide the fact that we were fooling around in a park and he did not mean a person he meant his penis and so as soon as I pulled away he started coming and I felt so embarrassed because I was like I am so sorry I did not know what you were meaning and yeah it was embarrassing and I think it was more embarrassing because I didn't know him that well um but we just kind of laughed it off it was fine but and the last one is probably my most embarrassing moment and I cannot believe that I'm sharing this online my battery just started flashing so maybe that's God telling me that I shouldn't share the story online but this happened probably six months after I got injured I was dating a guy and um I was still trying to figure out my body, still trying to figure out my disability, and still trying to figure out the way that my body worked after having a spinal cord injury. So I did not fully have control over my body like I do now. And I don't fully have control over my body now, but I don't ha I didn't have as much control as I do now then. We often, this happened more than once, we would be having sex and I would feel like pressure, I would feel like pain or whatever. And I didn't think much about it, I just thought, you know, it was a little bit uncomfortable so I would ask like switch positions or something. Um, come to find out, I was actually pooping during sex. But I didn't know because I can't feel that and the guy wouldn't tell me, like he never told me, he never stopped. He just kept going and then when it was over he'd be like I'd be like did I poop and he'd be like oh yeah sorry I didn't finish like that's kind of gross and weird I wish he would have said something thankfully knock on wood it has not happened since then it only happened with him um, and I think that that was just because I was trying to figure out my body and my body was trying to adjust to being paralyzed because it was pretty fresh after I'd gotten injured so yeah that's a really embarrassing story and I cannot believe I just shared that on the internet so if you saved this song you're welcome for that I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope that I didn't gross you out too much or I hope that you don't have a new, different opinion on me but if you guys want to ask more juicy questions like this I would love to be more open with you guys on the internet so I'm gonna leave my curious cat down below you guys can um, send in questions anonymously there or you can send them over on my Instagram it's just at hey Sabrina faith and I would love to talk, talk with you guys over there and if you guys want another video like this give it a thumbs up and let me know what you thought in the comments below I will see you guys later have a good one bye